Hello everyone, today in this video we'll be discussing the module 1 of ADA super important questions. These are the questions which I have picked from the previous papers and the model paper, the most important and the repeated ones. And before starting, please do like and subscribe. It helps make more videos like this. And if you have any questions or want the PDF of this, you can DM me on Instagram here. So without wasting more time, let's get started. The first super important question is define algorithm. Okay, so in analysis and design of algorithm, right? So algorithms definition is the important question. Okay, or they explain the fundamentals of algorithmic problem solving, explain different steps in designing and analyzing algorithms. Okay, so fundamentals and designing and analyzing the steps of algorithm. These two are related questions. Okay, so basically, first you need to know what is the definition of algorithm. Algorithm means the way of doing things. Okay, so algorithm is a sequence of unambiguous instructions for solving a problem. How do you solve a problem? Those steps. Okay, that is the algorithm for obtaining a required output for any legitimate input in the finite amount of time. This is the definition you need to write. Okay, and what are the fundamentals of algorithmic problem solving? There are eight fundamentals. Okay. So the first one is to understand the problem identify the input output constraints and edge cases what the problem is about Okay, and break down the problem into sub problems and clarify ambiguities Once you have understood the problem then decide on computational means means how you are going to solve it Which data structure and the computational resources you are going to use what will be the time complexity space constraints and hardware limitations Then you will decide on you want exact solution or approximate solution Okay, based on the cost you will decide that then you will choose the algorithmic design technique you want to uh, select an approach if it is brute force, divide and conquer, dynamic programming, greedy approach, and understand the trade offs between efficiency and clarity. Then design the algorithm, write the step by step logical procedure to solve the problem, use pseudocode or flowcharts to structure and uh, use it before the implementation. Then prove its correctness means the algorithm works. To prove it, you can use the mathematical induction and other edge cases. Consider the edge cases which can be uh, occurring during the inputs and analyze the algorithm how much time is it is taking, the time complexity and efficiency you have to calculate, worst case, best case, and average case performance. Then finally, code the algorithm using your programming language. Okay. So this is the uh, eight fundamentals of the algorithmic uh, uh, algorithmic problem solving. And if we put those steps in the form of a diagram in a flowchart, first understand the problem, decide on computational means, exact versus approximate solving uh, algorithm technique, then design the algorithm, prove the correctness of algorithm, analyze the algorithm, and code the algorithm. Okay, so these are the steps you need to write. This is the flowchart. Okay, for the steps in designing and analyzing the algorithm. Next important question is the define asymptotic notations, big O, big omega, and big T. Okay, now to measure how much time one algorithm takes, we need to decide on an algorithm. Uh, I mean, uh, decide on a technique. The technique is asymptotic notations. Okay, it is a mathematical tool used in computer science to describe the time or space complexity of algorithms as the input size grows large. Okay, as the input size becomes large, how much time it is taking? Is it taking more more time or it is it, uh, is it taking okay okay time like that? Okay, they help compare the efficiency algorithms independently of hardware or exact implementation. Instead of actually running that algorithm and finding out the time we will be analyzing it using some formulas okay so as we know there are different classes of efficiency worst class best class and average class for representing each efficiency class there are notations called as asymptotic notations there are three of them for the worst case we will be using big o notation for the best case we'll be using the big omega notation and for the average case we'll be using big theta notation okay now how do we calculate how much time it is taking okay usually we'll be using the worst case because worst case is the maximum amount of time some al algorithm can take okay so if we use best case it might not give me a uh, give me a proper uh idea of how much time it is taking because always everything will not be the best case but it is obvious that it will not cross the worst case because worst case is the last maximum limit of uh, time which the an algorithm can take okay so if there is a single for loop how many time this thing uh, this part will run this part will run 0 to n means n time so the algorithm means time complexity will be n if n is bigger it will take bigger time like that it is okay next is a nested for loop First, it runs for n time, and each n time it is running for another n time. So, total time this uh, code part of code runs for n square time. So, its time complexity is n square. If we see the Fibonacci series, here the Fibonacci series is itself calling it. Okay. So, if I have passed here as 6, so first here it will call for 5 and 4. When it is calling for 5, it will again call for 4 and 3. When it is calling for 4, it will call for four, uh, 3 and 2. Like that, it will keep on calling it again and again. That is exponential time. Okay. Recursive algorithms will have exponential time. It is 2 power n. It is denoted as 2 power n. Okay. Now, what is worst case? Suppose that there is a function g of n like a for loop with n as input. Okay. If a for loop is there as n as input, this is a uh, time time taken for that is uh, o of n. Okay. Now, 
that is the graph you are making here for based on n value if it is increasing more time will increase more that's obvious right if more input is there higher input it will take more time and this is the line now whichever algorithm or the function it is taking lesser time than this that one will be marking it here so since this one is taking lesser time than g of n i'll be telling that in its worst case also it will not cross g of n so this is the worst case scenario for this function okay so the that will be denoted by big o of g of n means worst case of this will be uh, not uh, more than worst case of this okay this will always be covered under this no matter how much worst case is this one it will be under this uh, value which is the time limit okay so as the input n increases time also increases every function t of n has time duration of g of n belongs to o of g of n big o of g of n okay so this is the uh, c into g of n and this is the t of n so t of n as you can see it is not crossing this value here so in the worst case of t of n also it will not cross this value so t of n belongs to the worst case of g of n okay like that we will be writing so t of n is less than g of n and also it can be written as t of n belongs to worst case of g of n which is big o of g of n okay and while considering which classes of function t of n belongs to we can ignore the constants so while comparing the classes and all we will be not uh, taking the constants into consideration okay so n square n into n minus 1 and into n plus 1 by 2 4 in n plus into 3 n plus 1 uh, 3 n plus 2 by uh, 6 all these things are still n square only because the thing which is affecting is the n value not the value which is uh, dividing here okay that will not affect much the main thing which is affecting is uh, n value if it consider 10,000 or million times okay all of these belong to n uh, o of n square and all of these here which uh, is belonging to n okay because n is present here you cannot see n square there okay so it is belonging to n now best case is every function t of n that takes more time than g of n no matter what the function is if this is g of n the t of n always takes more time than g of n then it can be said that the best time of t of n is g of n like that okay t of n belongs to o of n cube so n cube will take more time n square will take less time so best case of uh, n cube is n square like that we'll be taking okay t of n takes more time than g of n t of n belongs to best case scenario of g of n like that it is covered under it next is average case average case is nothing but between two values c2 of g of n and c1 of g of n c1 of g of n is above here and uh, c2 of g of n is below t of n so in between it is sandwiched so it is called as the uh, average time efficiency okay Next point one question is explain general plan for analyzing efficiency of recursive algorithm. So there are five steps to analyze the time efficiency for recursive algorithm. What is recursive algorithm? If I have defined an algorithm here and the same algorithm I'm calling with a different value, so it will call again uh, this one and it will come here again, call it uh, and it will come here and so on. It will uh, keep on going. That is recursive algorithm. So first step is to decide on parameter indicating the input size. What is the size of input you are taking? Identify the algorithm's basic operation. Whether in the uh, uh, function what you are doing you are comparing it or doing multiplication or you are doing another for loop here in, in inside it whatever is the basic operation which happens in each iteration that is the uh, algorithms basic operation okay next is check whether the number of times basic operation executed is varying on different inputs of the same size okay if there is different input of the same size, like input is 10 it is 100 it is 1000 based on that if the basic operation is varying or not if it is varying in that case the worst case average case and best case will be different right if it is not varying means all the cases it will be same so we have to find out that and calculate accordingly the first step is to set up a recurrence relation with appropriate initial condition for the number of times the basic operation exec is executed okay so in the fibonacci series we are calling fibonacci again and again with n minus 1 and n minus 2 right so these two are the uh, repeated uh, recurrence relations okay solve the recurrence relation or at least ascertain the order of its growth of its solution so this is the five steps we will be analyzing the time efficiency of algorithms and usually they will be asking you to uh, derive the time efficiency for uh, algorithm like for example here they have asked find factorial of a number okay this one they can ask this is the most repeated one and another one which they can ask is the tower of Hanoi okay both with recursive algorithms so how do we do this the uh, factorial of the number means that factorial of 5 means what 5 into 4 factorial 4 factorial is nothing but 4 into 3 factorial 3 factorial is nothing but 3 into 2 factorial which is nothing but 2 into 1 factorial which is nothing but 1 only so 5 into 4 into 3 into 1 is nothing but 5 factorial so we are calling uh, the same thing factorial with n minus 1 value 5 it is then it will call 4 if it is 4 then it will call 3 if it is 3 it will call 2 along with that a constant time is being taken into ca uh, calculate okay for the multiplication operation now if you take the recurrence relation t of n can be written as t of n minus 1 plus o of 1 and t of n minus 1 can be written as t of n minus 2 plus o of n just in the uh, in the place of n 
what we wrote n minus 1 so if it is already n minus 1 in the place of n if you write n minus 1 it will be n minus 1 minus 1 so now in the place of n again if we write as n minus 1 it will become n minus 3 here and o of 1 is always calculated here so if we keep on substituting in the place of this we substitute this and in the place of this we substitute this what we will obtain is we will obtain an equation where it will be n minus n which will be t of 0 okay and t of 0 is constant we will ignore it and till that, uh, that time n number of o, o of 1 will be calculated so n, n number of times something is getting executed so the time complexity will be o of n that's the for loop right in for loop n number of times a loop will execute so its compl time complexity is big o of n so here also uh, n times o of n means o of n only so it will be time complexity will be o of n this is for factorial next one is tower of hanoi okay in tower of hanoi what will be there is there will be three uh, rods will be there inside the rods we will have our disks okay what is our task is move the same order disks to another uh, rod without making uh, a smaller disk uh, sit below our uh, upper disk in that way we have to arrange so we will have to put like this like this like this we will have to maintain this order okay we cannot put a smaller disk and on top of that uh, bigger disk okay so how do we approach it to solve a tower of hanoi with n disks okay n disks are there in this case i consider three disks like that there can be n number of disks move n minus one disks from source to auxiliary or rod so there are three rods right this is source this is auxiliary this is destination so from the source we'll be moving to the auxiliary uh, rod move the nth largest disk from the source to destination rod after moving the above uh, um, disks will be moving the largest one largest one to the destination rod okay and after that again the same disk will be there will be moving back to the source rod okay and again we'll be repeating the same thing unless we and until we obtain a pattern where it is uh, in the form of largest to smallest okay that is a tower of hanoi problem so if we write it's a recursive algorithm it will be t of n is equal to 2 of t n minus 1 plus o of 1 why 2 times t of n minus 1 because two steps are being performed from the source to auxiliary and from the uh, source to the destination auxiliary from the destination again it is the constant okay so here we'll be taking as uh, o of 1 okay now after we have uh, done that sorry i mean this is the constant okay the middle one this is n minus 1 disk are being moved so n minus 1 we are calculating okay n minus 1 times the disk are moved here only one disk is moved so we are taking o of 1 okay so when we apply the same uh, formula for t of n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 we will be obtaining the equation 2 uh, power n minus 1 okay this is the only thing which you need to write in the final exam okay also this thing you need to write okay because you need to write the derivation for it okay next one is the explain general plan for analyzing non recursive algorithm the algorithm which does not call itself in the algorithm that is called as the non recursive algorithm so here also there are five steps the first step is decide on parameters indicating the input size identify the algorithm's basic operation check whether the number of times the basic operation is executed if it is executed in varying amount of times you have to calculate the best case worst case and uh, average case efficiency set up a sum expressing the number of times the algorithm's basic operation is executed we have got the sum how much time it is executed then use the standard formula and rules of sum manipulation either to find out a closed form formula or the count or at the very least establish its order growth okay so we are calculating how many times the basic operation is getting executed and that will form its time complexity okay now for an example in the exam they can ask you along with this they will ask you uh suggest non-recursive algorithm for finding maximum element this is one of the most repeated ones okay they can ask you this now if they ask about the maximum element how do you find a maximum element in a given array okay array is here all the elements are here how do you find if it's the maximum element start with each uh, element one by one and choose the first element as the largest element assume it okay assume this is the largest element then you compare the next element and see if it is larger than the previous one or not if it is larger make this the largest okay largest will be a variable which will store the till now what is the largest element then compare the next one with this if it is larger make it large uh, keep it as uh, i mean if this is larger update uh, the largest value from this to this if this is larger keep it as same only skip to the next one like that we'll keep go till the end and we'll be able to find out which is the largest element this is the algorithm for it and in the time efficiency we'll have to see what are the operations being performed initialization is performed one time loop and control check is performed n minus one iterations because in each iteration we'll be checking the value if it is uh uh, i's value is uh, in between 1 and n minus 1 or not then comparison a of i is greater than max value again a comparison n minus 1 comparison will be done assigning a value assignment conditional at most n minus times n minus 1 times in the worst case worst case means at the last it is present okay and every other element is greater than the previous element so every time comparison will be done and change will be done which is the assignment okay and return value at one time at last will be returning okay so if we add up all of these values we'll be able to see 
line one uh, constant amount of time it is taking and this is taking c2 c3 and c4 assume c2 c3 and c4 and n minus one times it is taking okay so if you add up all of them and multiply with n minus one this whole operation takes place n minus one times okay and this is plus one time so we'll ignore the constants and just consider uh, just uh, take into consideration the uh, n value so here we have n and not n square or n cube so the time complexity of it will belong to big o, uh, big o of n okay Next is if uh, t of n uh, t1 of n belongs to o or uh, uh, big o of g1 of n and t2 of n belongs to big o of g2 of n then show that adding these two values which is in the left hand side t1 plus t2 it is uh, it belongs to the worst case efficiency of maximum among g1 and g2 okay we have to show that when we add t1 and t2 it will be less than g1 and g2 because this is the worst cases here and obviously less than worst case only individually also it will be there when we add up also it will be less only that we have to show okay so this is the formula which you have to prove t1 of n plus t2 of n it belongs to the uh, big o of maximum of g1 and g2 of n now what we can do is we can take the uh, letters a1 b1 and a2 b2 okay if a1 is less than uh, equal to b1 and a2 is less than equal to b2 then if we add a1 and a2 obviously it will be less than or equal to b1 and b2 only or the maximum among b1 and b2 whichever it is it will be less than that right so when we do that uh, for the same thing here we will multiply c1 with g1 and c2 with g2 when we add up uh, add up both of them the greater among c1 and c2 can be taken as c3 so c3 will take here for c1 it is greater than this and c2 also uh, will take c3 whichever is greater in these two cases so obviously if it is greater means this will ho still hold right here some number is there i am increasing that number again just to take it as common so it will be c3 into two times max of g1 and g2 of n so whichever is maximum multiply it with two times of c3 that will be greater than or equal to t1 plus t2 of n so this proves that the summation of the time complexities of these two is less than or equal to or other in other words it belongs to the big o of maximum among g1 and g2 of n okay next is write an algorithm for sequential search of an element using an array okay now if there is an array given how do you search for an element if it is present or not you will check each element if that if this is the element which i am finding or not is this the element is this the element is this the element and so on we will keep on doing until we reach that element which i am trying to find now algorithm for sequential search so i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 it will go every time it will check if it is the k value or not every element if it is there return i means which index i have found it okay so time complexity they have asked in the question to derive the time complexity best average and worst case efficiency this is very simple in best case means whenever you uh, means in the case where you had to find out and the first element you check that was only the element so how much time it took only one iteration that means it's the best case efficiency okay it will be a uh, big omega of one okay and worst case means you find out uh, till the last uh, element and the last element will be finding out the final answer so that is the uh, worst case where it will be you will be checking n element so it will be belonging to o of n uh, the third one is average case in average case you will be uh, most probably going to find out somewhere in between so if you take out the average in uh, if you found out in the first iteration it will be one time you have searched if you find out in the second iteration two times you have searched so it will 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus till n you will do and divided by n times so it will be n into n plus 1 by 2 divided by n that will be n plus 1 by 2 so still it is n only here so the time complexity will still belong to n only okay and this is the worst case efficiency which is big theta okay big theta is worst case efficiency sorry uh, this is the average case okay which is the uh, big theta okay the final comparison also given here can go through it okay if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next